and uh, this session is about having a victory over all sins with God's help some people think it's impossible to overcome all sins now we cannot be perfect but we can stop the sins as soon as the sinful thoughts appear in our hearts in our mind so I'm going to talk about how to overcome the sins as soon as the sinful thoughts appear sometimes we cannot stop sinful thoughts totally because of our sinful nature but as soon as a sinful thought appears we can stop it okay so we'll continue with this first we realize that God hates sins and punishes sinners God hates sins and punishes sinners first Corinthians 10 8 nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did and in one day 23,000 fell nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents so when the Israelites sin committed adultery 23,000 were killed in one day and then the other day they were destroyed by the serpent so God wants to punish the sinners and uh, the uh, the fact that now God doesn't punish us yet is not because uh, uh, his righteousness doesn't require him to that to do that it's because God wants to give us more time according to his righteousness he wants to punish all sinners right now but he wants to give us time to save us so because of his love and his mercy he extend the time for us so that we have time to repent now even in the New Testament when people sin God can punish right away Acts 5 3 but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself verse 4 you have not lied to men but to God then Ananias hearing these words fell down and breathed his last so great fear came upon all those who heard these things so Ananias and his wife uh, saw that many people in the uh, uh, early church sold the houses and gave the money to the uh, apostles they wanted to do that too but they wanted to do that to attract attention to say that they also give the money but uh, they want, don't want to give all the money they keep part of the money now the, if they want to keep part of the money it's okay too but the problem is they tell Peter that that's all the money so that's why uh, Satan filled his heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part, part of the price of the land for yourself you have not lied to men but to God so when we tell lies God can strike us dead right away when we commit any sin God can strike us dead anytime thank God he doesn't do that thank God he has compassion on us and he wants to give us time so uh, these two points here uh, these two passages here tell us that God can punish sinners anytime God, God can execute uh, the, uh, the judgment on us okay and then Jesus said to the man healed of 38 years of sickness John 5 14 see you are well again stop sinning or something worse may happen to you so this man healed of 38 years of sickness and Jesus told him stop sinning or something worse may happen to you so uh, what will what will happen to him could be a worse sickness or maybe evil spirit even or maybe other problems can come to him whenever we sin we give the devil a foothold and then when the devil has a foothold he can still kill and destroy he can uh, harm us in different ways so we need to realize that anytime we sin something worse can happen to us so let us remind ourselves when we sin something worse can happen to us so anytime we have a sinful thought we say I don't want anything happen to me that destroy God's plan now that was my motivation when I experienced the Holy Spirit when uh, uh, Anna uh, uh, Carlos and Acondia laid hand on me and I experienced a great love of God filling 
my whole person and the power of God entered me. I was so touched. I said, I never knew I can experience God like that. I spent a lot of time praying and loving God. And I found that when I lay hands on people, people can experience the, uh, the power or the love or the care, uh, the, uh, the peace or the joy of the Lord. And I said, this is a wonderful gift. I want to keep this. I don't want anything to steal from me. So at that time, I start to pay attention to sins. Anytime I have simple thought, I want to stop it. I want to stop it as soon as possible so that it won't affect me, so that it won't take away the blessings of God. I, I don't want anything to destroy this wonderful gift that God has given me. So I hope we all believe that we, God has a wonderful plan in our lives, even though some of us might not have experienced the Holy Spirit so powerfully, but still God has a wonderful plan. The more we love Him, the more we experience Him. The more we love Him, the more we'll be blessed by God. But when we sin, Satan can steal from us. So we realize that sins will bring something worse to happen to us. And sinning can cause us to reap destruction. Galatians 6, 8 For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So if a person uh, continue to follow his flesh, his sinful nature, he will reap destruction. Destruction of the whole life. First, destruction of his peace, his relationship with God, his joy, uh, uh, his family, his church, his ministry. And Satan can destroy all these things. And finally, Satan can take away the relationship with God and take away uh, eternal life. And that is terrible. So we need to realize that sins will bring destruction. It will bring destruction. But some people say, well, I asked Jesus to forgive me, so it's okay. Now, Jesus does forgive, but there is still a consequence of sin. For instance, someone yell at someone else. Even though he asked this person to forgive, the person could forgive. You know, it depends on the person. He asked God to forgive, and God forgives him. But the relationship with this person will have been influenced that it might be hard for, to restore that total relationship, the good relationship before that incident. Or any, many marriages because of the yelling, fighting, and hurting each other, that it can be hurt in a way that it cannot go back to the earlier stage. But still, the more they work on it, the more it can be restored. So we need to understand that, that uh, sins can bring destruction. It can destroy our lives gradually, step by step. And the carnal mind is an, is an enemy of God. Romans 8, 7 Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So the carnal mind, the mind that is set on the world, is enmity against God, is the enemy of God, is fighting against God. And it's not subject to the law. It, it doesn't obey the law, nor indeed can be. It cannot because the, the carnal mind, the mind that is set on the world, it's controlled by Satan, controlled by the sinful nature. So we need to understand that the carnal mind, the, uh, the uh, sinful mind, uh, is very destructive and it, it's against God. So if we have this mind always thinking about sex, always thinking about lust, always think about pride and anger, frustration with people, all this will cause us to have big problems. So we need to realize that uh, when we have this carnal mind, it will then we will be against God. Then we won't be able to uh, follow God uh, willingly. That's why we see many Christians, they don't willingly follow God. They, they, uh, they reject God. They rebel against God. So that's because of the, they have a carnal mind, a mind that uh, is affected by the world. And breaking one law breaks the whole law. James 2.10 For whoever breaks, keeps the whole law, and yet stumbles at just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. Uh, so when we sin against God and sin against man, any sin we commit 
it actually breaking all the law. The reason is like this. For instance, if someone is angry with another person and cannot forgive the other person, then it will affect his own peace. It will affect his relationship with God. It will affect his relationship with other people and his ministry. So everything will be affected. When people have lust, it will affect the family, affect the ministry, affect his peace. Whatever sin we commit and we let the sin stay in our heart, it will affect the whole person. That uh, we would not bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit and we would not have a good relationship with God. And gradually, people would even reject God and doesn't want to obey God. Uh, have negative feelings toward God. And that's why in some churches that uh, that very often Christians can fight against each other and they disobey or uh, disagree with the church on certain things. For instance, let's do evangelism together and they refuse. They don't want to do it because in their heart they have this enmity uh, toward God. So whenever a person has sin, it will affect the whole person. The person will not have a good relationship with God doesn't have a good relationship with people and with himself and with ministry and with the family. So breaking one law, any sin, any sin is like uh, yeast that can harm the whole lump of loaf of the bread. Do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians 4.26 In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So when we are angry and then sin, now God in His anger, He has righteous anger. So He does not sin while He is angry. But for people, is we don't have pure righteous anger. Very often there is anger uh, brought by His own sinful nature. So when we are angry, it's easy for us to, to sin. And then do not let the sun go down while we are still angry. Because when we continue to be angry, then we could give the devil a foothold. We can see from the context here. So give the devil a foothold means that uh, we sin. And then we'll give the devil a, f a place that he can step on to enter our life. And then when he enters our life, he will come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He will come and destroy our whole life. And God calls us to pursue perfection. 1 Timothy 6.14 To keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as humans, we can never be perfect, but we can try our best to be perfect with the help from God. So we can try our best. As soon as we have sinful thought, we can take care of it. So there is a calling to be holy. Because God is holy when we live in sin then God cannot have a close relationship with us. Then God's blessing cannot come to us easily. And God's anointing cannot stay in on us. So it's very important that we realize that when we uh, follow perfection as much as possible, uh, that we want to live a life without spot or blame. Now, holiness doesn't mean just mean not sinning. Holiness means loving God, have a close relationship with God submit to God and uh, delight in God. So a good relationship with God and then to obey Him, to love God and love people and not to sin. That is holiness. Okay, so how do we overcome sins? First, when we sincerely repent of our sins, God will definitely, definitely forgive us. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is um, uh, God's uh, promise that whenever we confess our sin, we are sorry for our sin, for sure God is faithful. That means He keeps His promise. Whenever He promised something, uh, He will keep it. So He promised us that when we confess our sin. Of course, this means sincerely. If someone is planning on committing another sin, for instance, he has committed adultery and he asked God to forgive him, but he has a plan to continue to adultery. Then he's not uh, sincerely re repenting. So if we sin sincerely repenting of our sins, 
God is faithful. He will keep His promise, and He's just because Jesus Christ has already paid for the sin. So it's fair for Him to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He will cleanse us from all our our sins. He will. That is a sure promise of God. But many, for many people, it's very hard to believe that. Many people say it's too hard. Uh, when I've seen. Many people say, when I sin, I dare not pray to God. Now, Satan warns us not to pray to God because Satan will accuse us and say, you have sinned, so you don't deserve God's forgiveness. Now, Satan attacks us first to attract us to sin. And then when we have sinned, Satan will put the thought in us that we, that we put shame in us, that we don't want to come to God for forgiveness. There are many people that uh, live the life like that, that they... Uh, they're attracted to sin and then they feel bad and then they don't want to pray. So when we trust in God's forgiveness, then we'll say, as soon as I sin, I, or as soon as I have this sinful thought, I will ask God to forgive me and I will uh, believe that He really forgives me. So I hope that we all really believe that God forgives us right away. And Psalm 51, 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, this, O God, you will not despise. So what we offer to God is a broken spirit, a spirit of, of repentance, that we are sad because of our sin. A broken and contrite heart, the heart that is sad because of his sins, that feels sorry for his sins, God will not despise. So when we sincerely repent, God will not despise. Now it has happened to me many times, sometimes I just thought of some sins in the past. And that is how God reminds us, help us to be, to pursue holiness. And then I say, Lord, I hate that sin. I don't want to commit that sin anymore. And I, I hate this sin that I've committed. I want to, uh, please forgive me. And I believe that God has forgiven, forgiven me. And then I say, anytime in the future there is a temptation to sin, I want to stop it. I don't want the sin to continue affect me. So this is how God helps us to hate sin. The step to overcome sin is very important to realize that sins are very destructive and hated. When we know that it's destructive, it would destroy our life and hate sin, then sin doesn't have a place in our life and then we can stop it as soon as it appears in our heart. Romans 8.37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So. We can be conquerors because Jesus Christ has given us that victory. So we all can be conquerors. Uh, so don't believe what the de devil told us, that you can never overcome your sin. You're, you're too weak. You're always sinful. You're always lusting. So we want, don't want to believe that. So the five steps to victory, again, so this is, can be used for any kind of problems in our life. First is be aware of any sin or anything that affects our lives. So we become aware of the sins or the sinful thought. And believe that any sin or negative things are destructive. Anything negative, any sin is destructive. It will destroy our life, destroy our marriage, destroy our future, destroy our marriage and our uh, uh, ministry. And three, apply biblical principles to the problems. What does the Bible tell, tell me to do? The Bible tells me to repent of the sin and hate sin and say no to sin. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. Pray to ask God to forgive us and have strength to overcome the sin and choose to obey. So these five steps, I hope you remember it. Aware, destructive, Bible, pray, obey. We can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they become action. So the key is that we stop the sinful thought whenever it appears in our mind. Whenever we have any lust, when we look at a woman and have any lust, immediately we say this is destructive. And what does the Bible say? The Bible tells us to live a holy life and then uh, adultery or affect the whole person. And then we pray to God for forgiveness and for strength. And then we say, I want to stop looking at the woman. I want to stop thinking about the woman. I want to have uh, holy thoughts. I want to keep my marriage. I want to bless my spouse. I want to uh, stay away from any sinful thought. 
and sin can destroy our relationship with God, can destroy our relationship with people, can destroy our marriage, our job, our ministry, and reputation. Sometimes it, it is re in re irreversible, the reputation. So we want to keep our reputation is very important and our future and our whole life so it can destroy our future and our whole life and God's plan for our life and our eternal life if we continue to sin sometimes there is no turning back when we sin and then again we can encourage ourselves if we improve by 1% a day we can improve much in 100 days so keep encouraging ourselves so when we stop the sin one day we say thank God I have uh, stopped this sin today thank God and I want to continue to to overcome my sins or whenever we uh, you know in the past for instance the person uh, would be angry for a long time but today he's angry just for a short time and then he stop it then he can congratulate himself and say I have improved today now of course it's best that he stop the anger altogether but if he cannot stop so quickly but after a short time he stopped already then he can applaud himself and be happy that he has improved now I use other illustration here for instance sometimes uh, some people have sadness depression they say oh I'm so unhappy people are not treating me nicely uh, I feel very hurt I feel very unhappy now it's natural for us to feel unhappy when people hurt us but we don't want to continue to feel hurt all the time it's like Joseph if he kept feeling hurt all the time when he was in Egypt his whole life would be destroyed and God's plan would not come true so he chose to put down his hurt feelings from his brothers so when we are hurt by people we say I'm aware that I'm hurt by that person and I know that it's destructive and then I know that uh, and then what the Bible tells me to do is uh, not to be not to fret because of people not to feel sad because of people and then I pray for forgiveness and for strength and then I would choose to rejoice in the Lord I will count God's blessing I would say God is blessing me so we we'll tell my, ourselves God has blessed me in so many ways I can thank God for that I can be happy for that even though there are still problems in my life there are people are still hurting me but it doesn't matter I can God can bless me so it's very important to believe a few things God's blessing will not be stopped by sinners the sinners cannot stop God's blessing and these blessings are very important and if we trust in God and follow God nobody can steal these blessings from God from me and I can continue to be blessed by God so we believe that God's blessing cannot be stolen by people and we believe that God loves us he wants to give us those blessings and we believe that we are precious we are precious and so we don't want anything anyone to steal it from us so we believe God is God loves us and we are precious and nobody can steal the good things from from us and then uh, when we trust in God God will give us back uh, the blessings to us so when we believe all this then we have the motivation and say I want to keep the blessings of God I want to continue to follow God I don't want pe to continue to feel hurt and feel sad I want to uh, rejoice in the Lord when we count the blessing and say and we can sometimes dance and sing and, sh and, s and laugh and say I can be joyful because God is blessing me thank you Lord Jesus you love me it's so wonderful to have you hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord God is wonderful God is wonderful hallelujah so we can help ourselves to be filled with the positive thoughts of God and then we can be joyful again so many people didn't think that uh, sadness can be a sin because when you continue when we continue to be sad when we continue to be depressed then we we won't have the joy of the Lord we won't have the strength of the Lord our heart will be close to God so it's very important that we realize that the negative emotions can affect us so we want to stop it as soon as it shows up in our in our heart and uh, sometimes people hurt us first but even when they hurt us we don't want to be angry or sad because they hurt us because when we are sad or angry then they succeed in stealing from us we don't want to lose anything 
because other people sins because it's their fault it's the fault I don't want to carry the burdens so these are some motivation I hope we have this motivation and there's another way to look at it there are four four points one the first point is that uh, that God loves us the second point is that my life is precious and then when I love God and obey God I'll be blessed and then when I sin then there will be destruction that destruction will come step by step so God loves me and I'm precious God loves me he wants to do great things in my life and then my life is precious I only live once I want to uh, do the, my best to uh, to be able to bless uh, by God you know we can be blessed by God even if we have little education even when we don't have much money you know I came from a very poor family I did not have the money to go to have so much ed education it's after I believe in Jesus get that God provides for me that he gives me the op opportunity to have much education because when I trust in God then God wants to bless me and use me and God wants to use you too so don't say that I I have no money I am too poor I have no education don't say that when we love God and follow God all the blessings will come to us so first God loves us he wants to bless us and our life is precious and then uh, when we love God and obey God then our life will go higher and higher and then but if we sin sin is destructive so these four points very simple if we believe that then when we follow God then our whole life will be blessed by God okay so these are the questions to help us uh, review this uh, uh, session and to remember apply, to be able to apply it so I have victory over all sins with God's help John 5 14 says stop sinning or something worse may happen to you after God forgives us all sin brings uh, uh, will sins bring any kind of damage to our lives yes it will it will bring damage uh, step by step if we don't stop any sin it will destroy our whole life it will destroy our peace our relationship with God relationship with people our job our future our family our church our ministry it will destroy everything and finally and most terribly is destroying our eternal life and will s and then why is there damage after for uh, forgiveness of God why is there still damage for instance someone kills someone he asks God to forgive him now God will forgive him but he will be punished by the country then he there is still a consequence or if we fight with the spouse even though we ask God to forgive and ask the spouse to forgive there's still a crack in the marriage that the marriage will not be the same as before unless we really intentionally build it up but if we continue to hurt each other hundreds of times then it's very hard to go back to the the, uh, the early love to, to, to have restored the, the total love in the marriage so there will be damage for instance reputation if someone has sinned and then the reputation is broken it's very hard to restore the reputation and restore people's trust in him and uh, even after forgiveness of sin are there consequences of sin so I just said that there is damage and consequences of sin and two when we sincerely repent of our sins will God surely forgive us yes he will forgive us how do we know that he surely forgive us It's from his promise and also from the peace of God when we ask God to forgive us and then we can experience the peace of God again and then Galatians 6 8 for he who sows the flesh will of the flesh reap destruction what kind of destruction will sowing to the flesh bring it will bring destruction to the whole person <coughs> <coughs> it will bring destruction to his peace and love and joy and his relationship with God and with people and his job and his marriage and and the future and and his eternal life so it will bring destruction to all these areas step by step now sometimes one sin can do it all if someone commits adultery it can destroy everything someone steal from the church it can destroy everything so so we have to be very careful uh, 
to know that sins are destructive. Many people continue to sin because they think it's okay to sin and then ask God to forgive them. They didn't realize there's a consequence of sin. So I hope we remember this and we apply it in our teaching and apply it to our life. And then what will God do if Christians continue to sin? If they continue to sin, then the, the relationship will not be a close relationship because God cannot live with a person who continues to sin. The person will continue to feel guilty. And then the distance from God will be farther and farther away. That will be greater and greater. And then uh, gradually, he, he's, you know, when he continues sin, he will try to stop the moving of the Holy Spirit. And gradually, he will lose the moving of the Holy Spirit. So gradually, he can lose the relationship with God. So it's very dangerous to continue sin and to, to quench the move of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.26 In your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. According to this verse, how do people give a devil a foot, uh, the foothold to the devil? When we sin, when we are angry, when we don't forgive, when we have any kind of sin, we'll give the devil a foothold because the context talk about sin. Okay, six. What is the first step of victory over sin that we have committed? The first step to victory is trust in Jesus' forgiveness and ask God to forgive us. So, to trust in Jesus' forgiveness, ask Him to forgive us so that we are cleansed of the sin. And then we say, God really forgives me so I can overcome, I can stop this sin after God forgives me. So, it's very important to have the forgiveness of God. I hope we have this habit of asking God to forgive us whenever we sense any sin. And even if we don't sense any sin, we continue to ask God to forgive us and to hate sin and to be sorry for our sin. Explain the five steps to victory. Aware, destructiveness, Bible, pray, choose to obey. So we are aware of a sin and it's destructive and the Bible teaches us not to sin and to to follow holiness and then pray for forgiveness and for strength and then choose to obey. I choose not to sin. I choose not to have lust. I choose not to have anger. I choose not to have uh, unforgiveness. I choose not to have sadness or depression. I choose to cooperate with people. I choose not to fight with people. I choose to say nice words to people even if they have done something wrong first. I want. I choose to to uh, forgive and to bless the person. So whenever we don't forgive, that's already a sin. Even when uh, the person sinned first, it's still a sin when we don't forgive. Okay, and then eight. How can we stop a sin when it enters our mind? Now the key to stopping a sin is as soon as we the simple thought in the mind, immediately we stop it. Whenever uh, we have the mind to dislike someone, in our mind that we don't like someone, we, we reject the person, we reject the person and then we say, this is destructive, this is bad, when I don't like this person. When we look at a person and we don't like him, now he might have problems, but we, we don't like the person, then it's a sin. Now we don't have to be good friends to the person, but we should be nice to the person, we should uh, be, you know, greet them and, and uh, talk with them and don't reject them. But we don't have to be close friends with anyone. Uh, we can choose our close friends. But anytime we find that we dislike someone, we don't want to see someone, uh, we reject someone, then it's a sin. Then we are not loving our neighbor as ourselves. That is a sin. Whenever we you know, cannot reach the mark, when we cannot reach the standard of God, when, when we cannot obey the, the law of God, then we are already sinning. So anytime we find that we cannot love the people, it's already a sin. When we cannot love ourselves, it's a sin. So when we dislike someone, we realize it's dis destructive. And then what does the Bible say? Love people as ourselves. And then, uh, and then pray for forgiveness and for strength. And then I choose to greet him. I choose to smile at him. I choose to be nice to him. So that's how we stop a sin. For instance, uh, our relationship with our spouse. 
we might have excuses and say, well, the, my spouse doesn't treat me nicely, that's why I, I'm angry with him. That's a, an excuse. But when we realize that we don't have a good relationship with the spouse, then it's our fault. Uh, then we, we realize, aware that we, we uh, reject our spouse and we know that it's destructive. It would destroy the, the marriage. Now sometimes, of course, it takes two persons. Later I will talk about how to build up the marriage. But at least we realize that, that if we dislike the other person, it would destroy the marriage. So it's destructive. And then what does the Bible say? Uh, husband, love your wife as, the, as Christ loves the church. And then for the wife to submit to the husband and also the husband submit to the wife too because the Bible verse Ephesians 5 21 says submit to each other and then talk about the wife submitting to the husband <coughs> <coughs> so we uh, we listen to each other and then when whenever we find that we don't are not treating each other nicely it's already a sin so when we're treating not treating our, our spouse nicely, it's already a sin. It's destructive. And the Bible teaches me to love him or her and uh, submit to him or her. And then number four, pray for strength and forgiveness. For forgiveness and strength. Lord, help me to be nice to him. Help me to tr treat him nicely. Help me to forgive him and to say positive words, words of grace to him. And then five, choose to do it. I choose to obey. I choose to bless him. I choose to say nice things to him. That is victory over our sin. So I hope we we'll all learn this. Now it need to, we need to practice. We need to practice every day so that we get used to it. So that we can do it and take care of our sins. Any sinful thought. Now the problem with many people, they didn't realize that uh, uh, you know, many behaviors are sin. For instance, laziness is sin because it's wasting God's plan, wasting God's plan in our life. If we just, you know, are lazy and do nothing, then it's a sin. Uh, and also, rejection of the church, rejection of the pastor, uh, because we say, I don't want to submit. Now, of course, the pastor should also listen to people and be nice to the people and not just force the people to submit. But if a person inside him, he has this heart to rebel, to reject the pastor, reject the church, then he has a sin. So he need to realize, he realize that he has a sin of rejection, uh, rebelliousness, and then it's destructive. And then what does the Bible say? Submit to those who, who uh, guide you and teach you and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then choose to choose to listen to them <clears throat> take the word seriously and obey them and follow the word of god so i hope that we all will take care of any different kinds of sin any anything negative now even when we let our emotions control us for instance some people are unhappy and then they will they will show much anger they will they will not talk to the family members. That's also a sin. That's, you know, neglecting people, hurting people by our emotions. So anything we find is negative is sin. So in these teachings, it's actually it's my teaching called Joyful Victory. I talk about different sins. But any time we notice any sin that is in us, we want to say no to it. Now, I want to say, for instance, uh, sometimes uh, with uh, marriage when the couple cannot love each other and then it's very easy for them to find try to find comfort from other people from other uh, people of the opposite sex that dependence on other people is already a sin you know sometimes people don't like to talk to the wife but they say I talk to some other girls they, they're so wonderful they they're always uh, smile when I talk to them and they're so nice and, and then they say, uh, it's nicer to talk to them than my wife. That's already a sin. That's not loving the wife as Christ loves the church. Then, and, and also, we are giving the devil a foothold to make us, you know, if we start to think of the girl, that's already a sin. Now, it can happen in the church that someone think about a girl 
because he thinks that the wife is not nice to him. So he thinks about another woman or another girl, and then he likes time with that girl or woman. And then what happens is it will gradually, gradually, it will become stronger and stronger, and then it can end up in adultery. So I hope that we realize that any sinful thought can lead to destruction. So when he is aware that he has this uh, uh, dependence on a, a girl or a woman of someone of the opposite sex it can happen to a woman too that a woman find that the husband doesn't listen to him but some other man listen to him uh, listen to her and then she finds very she find uh, comfort and then she want to talk to this man so when we find this dependence on another opposite sex person and then and then believe that it's destructive and then uh, what does the Bible say? The Bible say is love your wife uh, and uh, submit to your husband, love your family and then pray for forgiveness and strength and then five then I want to stop this unhealthy relationship now we can relate to people, we can relate to people in a church in a healthy way but the moment when we find that we depend on the person always look for the person, always looking for having fun with that person already there's a danger there so I hope we all regard ourselves when we find that this is happening to us that we become aware of that and we realize that it would destroy our spiritual life and our whole whole life and our the plan of God but many Christians are not aware of that they think it's okay you know I'm having fun I'm not committing adultery now adultery doesn't start with adultery it starts with just a little thought just a little thought. Oh, that girl is so beautiful. It's just a little thought. I like to talk to her. She's so nice. I, I, I love talking to her. That's, and then it gradually that uh, uh, the person wants to see the girl more and more, and then becomes uh, uh, dependent, depending on the girl, and then and then gradually uh, want to touch the girl and want to, and, and then other things develop. So we need to realize that. Uh, this is giving the devil a foothold and it would destroy our lives when our life has problems like this we will not be able to follow the plan A of God some people say it doesn't matter I don't want to follow plan A but we will suffer and that's why people suffer in the marriage when they have problems like this they will suffer in the marriage and, and then they hate the wife more because they say the wife now yell at me all the time because I look at the other girl and then there is more problem in a marriage and he will suffer a lot now if he has a divorce God dislikes that, that is a sin and also he will still not find you know he thinks that he has a divorce and then he will find a, a perfect love with this girl because as soon as he marries the girl the girl will start to re uh, demand of him to talk with her and to communicate with her and care about her and then he start to say, now she be has become like my wife. Because any woman after marriage will want the husband to care about her and listen to her. And then she has many needs. She has many emotional needs. She want care. And then uh, the man doesn't want to give that. She, he just want a girl to have fun and laugh and play together. You know, that's usually what happened to many men. But we realize that in a marriage, when we love the wife and listen to the wife and care about her and then there can be healthy relationship and then we can enjoy the relationship so there is only uh, we can only uh, we can only enjoy the marriage when we love the spouse and do good things to the spouse to make him or her happy so I hope that we all see this I know that many people have problems in the marriage so we'll, I'll talk about that uh, later uh, many people have problems in marriage actually you can look online for marriage and then Pastor Yip and then you can find me talking about marriage in YouTube and uh, Facebook so I hope we all uh, become aware of the destructiveness of sin it will destroy our whole life and we will lose the lose the joy Satan you know tempt us tempt us with a girl tempt us with money with different things and we think when we get that we'll be happy that's how Satan tempts us but actually when we get when a person get the girl 
he will suffer more and he will lose the joy he will lose the favor of God okay so we want to stop the sin when it enters our mind if we stop sinning while the sin is in our mind what would what should we say to ourselves we can say oh you've done well today you have overcome the sin today thank God but don't be proud because sin will come in again so we say thank God that God has helped me and I've obeyed God that's wonderful thank you Lord I thank you for working in my life and I want to continue to grow in you hallelujah okay so uh, so now we, we will stop here is there any question uh, this is a big big point about how to overcome sins it's um, it's very important for us to learn to um, overcome our sins and actually practice it now many people don't have the motivation to overcome sins because they they just don't take their life seriously they don't think the life is worthy they don't think the life is precious they think I, I meant worthy I mean precious he doesn't mean he doesn't think his life is precious our life is very precious so we want to uh, treasure our life and when we treasure our life we don't want to sin okay let's have, have a prayer right now the Lord Jesus help us to examine our lives are we living in some lust do we have negative feeling towards our spouse do we have negative feelings toward anyone do we have depression sadness anger or uncontrolled behavior that we are our anger is uncontrollable please forgive us and help us Lord help us Lord help us to realize that sins are destructive any kind of sin is destructive help us to realize that when we sin we will destroy God's plan and we will lose more and more to Satan Satan will steal more and more from us and anytime we submit to God and obey God and love God and take care of this sins God is very happy and God will continue to bless us even if we don't have a complete victory even if we have a little victory we can be happy of that and we can continue to grow so we overcome sins not suddenly all all the way overcome every sin but we overcome one sin at a time of course it's best to overcome all the sins but at least we are beginning to overcome our sins we thank God for that and we can be happy we are overcoming our sins Lord help us to believe in your forgiveness and to hate sins and to turn away from our sins thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus